we're now going to talk about what a browser is and specifically the pieces that we need to pay attention to as a web designer. When working on web pages, the three pieces of a browser that we must pay attention to are the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript portions. So let's take a look at that. First of all, a browser is simply software that reads a web page. And think of this piece here as representing any page whatsoever that's out on the internet. The idea is, how is that page read within the browser? Well, there's actually three pieces to a web page browser. And within the page itself, each one of these pieces reads a different portion of the page code behind the scenes in order to create the entire page you're looking at. So the first piece is what's known as the HTML piece. There is a parser built into the browser software itself, and that is the piece that reads the HTML. Now, what does HTML create? Well, first of all, it gives us page structure. You can think of it like the foundation on a house. If you don't have a strong foundation and you start adding all kinds of things within the house, the house will eventually collapse. So your page structure is important. What is comprised of page structure? Well, we have header tags, kind of like a newspaper headline, that help us when we're looking at the page or having it read to us by a screen reader helps us differentiate the different pieces within the page so we can focus on the content we want. That's why users scan web pages. Paragraphs and paragraph tags help put together blocks of text to make it easier to read it. There are a lot of other HTML tags sitting on a web page as you'll soon see as you start creating them. So page structure is an important piece. Now, what is the other important piece? Well, what's the content? What do we want to put on the web? So in terms of content itself, there is what's known as static content. In other words, every time you go to the page, it's the same. So our static content is always the same. Dynamic is usually coming from a database or some kind of scripting. So a database helps to feed dynamic content on a web page. So that's the HTML portion. What's the code on the page that gives it its page structure? Then we get to the fancy stuff. So basically, CSS and JavaScript. So what do those two do? Well, CSS makes it look nice. It helps organize content in terms of formatting, it makes it look nice, makes the text a particular size, a particular color, a particular font, also adds line height to make it more readable. But we also have the positioning piece of CSS, and it's positioning that gives it its page layout. So when we're talking about positioning, we're taking a look at how is the page laid out. So here's an example page. When I talk about this, I'm referencing, okay, there's the header area. This would probably be navigation over here. And this lower portion would be our footer. And then we have the actual page content right here. So that's what we're talking about with page layout. And that's the positioning piece. How does the page basically look in the browser? But positioning and styling Everything comprised of styling, it can even be pulling in images for the web page. So it's not just specifically X and Y coordinates, so to speak, as to where things sit on the page, but it can pull in and do a lot more. JavaScript-wise, we have user interactivity. So if I can do something on a web page and something changes, that's JavaScript that's doing it for you. So each one of these three parts kind of has its own little role to play in a web page. So you have to become familiar with these different pieces and we'll actually be starting out in HTML. Then we're going to move into formatting in CSS and then positioning. 
So we'll be covering that, and we'll also be taking a look at some JavaScript features throughout this course. And in the JavaScript department, there's quite a few different ways to implement JavaScript. So we'll be taking a look at a few different ways to go about doing that as well. But basically, user interactivity, things like images changing on a web page, messages appearing, you put your mouse over something or your cursor, and something happens. That's interactivity. Basically, CSS and JavaScript use something called an interpreter within the browser. And that's really the area where things can shift between browsers. The interpreters can do exactly that, interpret them differently. So when you're working across multiple browsers, four different devices, different screen widths, and across different browser versions even, the interpreters are the piece. This one right here, that's what tends to change across browsers. For the most part, HTML will display the same across browsers. So the pieces to look out for are the CSS and the JavaScript in your cross-browser compatibility. But technically, those are the three parts of a browser. We have HTML that adds the structure, CSS adds styling, both in formatting and positioning, and JavaScript adds the rest of the cool stuff, interactivity, to pull the user in to the web page and give them some things to do while they're there. But a browser is comprised of three parts, and that's an overview of what each part is and also the tasks that each part does when you're viewing a web page.